are live. Travis, we are live. What's going on, everyone? Travis Brown with the Eagle, Robert Cessna over there. Also with the Eagle, we're here at Davis Wade Stadium where the Aggies just beat Mississippi State for the first time since 2012 uh, in a pretty dominating defensive performance. Cease, what was your quick takes from the game? Just the fact that AM dominated. It's, it's a two score win, but it really felt like a four score win. AM was at least a touchdown better than Mississippi State. You can really say for each quarter, uh, except for the fluke, the lucky bounce, uh, the pick six return. Uh, AM left some points off the board, which is maybe not uh, that uh, unusual to expect because they're on the road at Mississippi State coming off a big victory but just really a very dominating victory. Yeah, and it made a lot of mistakes, which we'll get into, but the bottom line was this felt like a four, to me, felt like a 35 to seven or 38 to seven victory. You know, I was texting Alex during the game, and okay. yeah, the guy who's on here, Alex Miller, and he said, he kind of said, this seems like a, a funny game. I said, this feels like one of those high school games where one team knows the other team is just that much better than them, and they just kind of didn't come to play. I mean, that, that uh, Mississippi State's offensive line was just Swiss cheese for most of the night, especially even during a, a three-man rush at times. And they, they just didn't seem to be able to get anything going. But credit to defensive coordinator Mike Elko. He's a, a guy who's pretty much known and, and sticks with his four-man front, his man-to-man -man defense coverage. He went mostly zone with a three-man front today, brought pressure right now and then. They got six sacks. They, they did what they needed to do and followed that blueprint of how to beat Mike Lynch's air raid. You know, a lot of times we do talk about, you know, what is uh, things that they do. Uh, we always talk about schemes, but the bottom line is how do you win your place in space? And to me, there's no doubt that AM dominated the line of scrimmage because if you look, yeah, they rushed, they went, they dropped eight in coverage. But they still got tremendous pressure with three guys. They got so much pressure with three guys that a lot of times Mississippi State had to quickly throw the ball to the side. And when you can get pressure with three against five, I mean, oh, my gosh, you're going to have a lot of success. Alex, what was your uh, quick take from the game? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of seemed like a vanilla game. Uh, but I will say um, – a and when they, when they had the chance to take momentum, they took advantage of it. They blocked the punt. They scored on the next play. They got the fumble recovery. They punched in the touchdown. When Mississippi State, they got that second score, a and went down the field and scored again. You know, Mississippi State, they kind of hung around, but the Aggies weren't playing games. They didn't let them have a chance in that game. Uh, defense, I mean, how about the defensive effort? Three-man front, uh, you know, we talk about how AM they run a lot of man defense, but Mike Elko, he stuck to that blueprint that Kentucky and Arkansas that they kind of showed, and it worked. I mean, <laughs> Jaden Peavy said it. How do you beat a Mike Leach offense? You rush three and get to the quarterback, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, a lot of speed, you know, at times they sent that fourth and even a fifth rusher, and when they did, it really paid off. Um, so, Great day on defense for AM, especially when the offense, you know, there wasn't a lot of fireworks. You know, in that first half, they really wrote Isaiah Spiller there in the second quarter. A lot of zone run plays. Uh, Kellen, pretty pedestrian day. The big play was the touchdown catch and run to Chase Lane. But other than that, you know, there weren't, there wasn't really anything crazy that happened with the offense. And like Carson Green said, you know, last week, offense kind of bailed out the defense. And this week, uh, you know, the, the defense kind of bailed out the offense with all those big stops. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I thought it was a good win for AM. This has been a tricky place for them to go and be successful at. And so, you know, you look around the conference and ranked teams are losing. Auburn loses to South Carolina. Kentucky beats Tennessee. For AM to not kind of have that hiccup game after the win over Florida, that's big for AM and kind of this odd year. They keep pace at the top of the division when teams are just eating each other up left and right around them. And now they go into a bye week and they're going to play an Arkansas team that's on a roll. I mean, they went and beat Ole Miss. They probably could have scored 40, but took a knee at the one yard line with less than a minute left. 
So all of a sudden, this Arkansas game, which has kind of been a thorn in AM's side and giving Aggies grief till the bitter end. I mean, AM's come out victorious every time since they joined the SEC, but you know, that's not going to be an easy game in two weeks. And you got to feel good if you're AM going home with the win today. Yeah, for those of you who are watching on Facebook and on Periscope, be sure to fire any questions or comments you have uh, for us today uh, from this game or just want to spout off about what happened. You know, I hear what you said, Alex, but I almost kind of think, and see if you can tell me what you think about this, against this defense that, that has some good defensive numbers but isn't, you know, Alabama or anything like that, they, they, they really didn't need fireworks. They needed to run the ball because they were giving them – the, the middle of the field. They weren't stacking the box. They needed to run the ball to establish the run and then pass when they needed to pass. And I think this is one of those games that didn't necessarily call on the offense to win their game. Like they said, like Carson Green said, and, and the offense did what it needed to do to, to win the game. Well, the problem is not a problem is I think a good thing for AM looking forward, they made some small mistakes that cost them scoring 40 points. Juan's best throw of the day might have been the ball over the outstretched hand of a linebacker to uh, Smith in front of the safety. They turned into a 47-yard game down to the nine or eight, but Kenyon Green was called for a hole. That wiped out, which would have been the third 45-yard or longer uh, pass or fourth when you consider the touchdown as well. So that would have been a touchdown. They could have taken a touchdown at the end when they took a knee. They had three penalties on a punt return that they even – one of the the most important penalties, they didn't get the ball. So they gave up a possession. So AM's making these mistakes. But once again, when your line is so dominant, you can go ahead and make those mistakes and still win. So they're going to be able to go back and correct those. This is still an offense. It's going to most weeks put 35 to 40 points on. And you could say, well, Sesta, 28, no. They should have had 35 at the end. Smith's pass should have caught Kenyon Green, should have been holding. That puts you up to 42 right there. And that's not even considered uh, the other things in the game. So when you could say the offense was pedestrian, I agree with you, but they still could have scored 40 points with just a couple tweaks. And this was a defense that everyone said was pretty good. The numbers said, hey, they played LSU. They played Kentucky. Uh, they had some very good defensive numbers, and that defense did not really do anything except for the lucky bounce to get an interception. So once again, is I think AM's got to feel awful good. You guys touched on the people who lost. Not only did AM win on the road, it was really a, a very easy road win because other than the when they had that touchdown, the freak touchdown, I said, Oh, here comes all the momentum. AM went right down and scored. All the air went out of this place. The 11,000 felt like, sounded like a hundred. The game was over at that point. The 11,000 sounded like the piped in crowd noise that they had there from there. The, uh, so the uh, Isaiah Spiller, 18 carries, 114 yards, two touchdowns. He's probably the standout offensive oh, player. He's had a, man. A, had a great game. Interestingly enough, though, left in the fourth quarter, had his left ankle taped pretty heavily and uh, was kind of limping around the sidelines. But they proved that they have a little bit of depth there with Anaya Smith, uh, with uh, Devin Chain who came in at the end of the game and to help kind of seal things out. They also had Ernest Crown over in there for, uh, I believe, a play. But um, he, he was uh, – and, and a play where he, he came out in the flat. It was one of those third downs that Mon threw an incomplete pass that Crown over was open in the flat. If he hits Crown over, they might move the chains and get a big first down early there in the first half. That being said, they have they, – they, they flexed their – running back muscle a little bit today against what, like you said, the number said is a pretty decent defense. Yeah. And also is once again, is man, oh man, they won the offensive line. They won a defensive line against a team that's, you know, a program that's noted for their linemen just a few years ago, they sent two defensive linemen in the first round uh, to the in NFL. And that's why they ain't them lost here two years ago because of those guys. But, you know, it actually won through a couple bad balls today. I thought he didn't step into a few throws. But once again, he's on the road. When you go on the road, remember, last time on the road, they lost to Alabama. They made more mistakes, really, in a better opponent. So this time, yeah, you look at those three penalties on, on, the, on the one play, but you're going to have some mistakes on the road with such a young team. But when you can win by, convincingly by, you know, really three scores, four scores, 
uh, you're able to build on it. We touched on it before. A&M uh, moving forward. Uh, South Carolina lost today. To, you know, excuse me. Tennessee lost today. Auburn lost today. The only two teams ranked left on a and m schedule lost. A&M won today. The bottom line is this was going to be a huge game to add on to Florida. Yeah, this wasn't the Florida win where everybody goes, oh, man, let's go to Northgate. Oh, this is great. Da, da, da. It was a business-like win. Ugly at times, but that final score was 28-14 at Starkville. They lost here the last three times. Uh, let's get – I know we need to get out of here. we got people waiting on us here to get out of this <laughs> room. Um, so let's – real quick, uh, quick. I know you haven't necessarily considered all of them. Quick take on your grades. Well, once again, it's, you got to give higher than a C in almost everything. And the defense was outstanding. When you went in the road with that defense, how could you say anything against that defense? They gave up one score when the game was over. You went on the road. You wanted a place where you lost the last three years. You want to give a lot of you want to give a lot of B's, possibly B minus if you're Jimbo Fisher, because there's work to be done. This team could be better, but come on, let's be honest. A lot of us wouldn't have been surprised if they come in here late and egg and lost, but they didn't. We all talked about how this was a key two game stretch, uh, beating Florida, but not not succumbing to a, a, a little bit of a trap game at Mississippi State. The the, the sky's kind of the limit for them now. Um, they they have some tough games, but. Uh, I know people are tweeting out. They, they, uh, you, you want to knock on wood? It was even asked about it. They might have the easiest path to the college football playoff of any SEC football team if they can win out um, with this schedule. What we're sitting here, kind of, kind of mid-season at the bye week. Where, where is A and M? What is, what is the ceiling for A and M as we finish out the season? This, to me, this was a huge game because the defense played well. I didn't think the defense played well at Alabama. They obviously didn't play well against Florida. They didn't even play well against Vanderbilt for three quarters. Vanderbilt could have won that game. So the defense, this is the Mike Elko defense that I thought would be here in year three. This defense made plays. Buddy Johnson's becoming a big time player. The defensive line keeps getting better because of Leal, because of Peavy. So once again, is when you got so many, they're getting playmakers at all levels. When you get playmakers at all levels, Lane had another big play. I thought that was huge, losing Chapman, that Lane had a huge play. He turned a two-yard completion into whatever it was, 49. So once again, is and no big injuries. Anytime you play football, look across the country. People are having big-time injuries. A&M, yes, Spiller was limping, but a lot more people were limping, the guys that tried to tackle him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Alex, what, what, what's, the, uh, what's the ceiling for this A&M team now that, where we sit? Yeah, I mean, I think nine and one is definitely the ceiling. I mean, you look at the road ahead, you look at the teams that AM still has to play. There's not a game on the schedule, in my opinion, that you can go, this is a for sure loss. Obviously, road games at Tennessee, at home against LSU, on the road against Auburn. I mean, closing with that kind of stretch and then you throw a home game against Ole Miss in there. I mean, yeah, you're running the gauntlet in November in the SEC. But you can't tell me right now that any of those games you're like, man, I don't think AM can win that. You know, I think AM can win every game that's left on their schedule. It's just a matter of can they keep building on what they're doing? You know, Carson Green said after the game, the difference in this team is they don't crater. That's something that we've kind of seen happen at times in years past. But veteran team. They've got a lot of talent that's young. We saw a lot of young guys on the defensive side, particularly today, especially in the secondary when they were running those dime and nickel packages. You know, we'll see what they do over these next two weeks, uh, how how they kind of progress with the bye week. It's kind of their get better week, they said. You know, they have a winnable game against Arkansas, and then here we go. I mean, it's down the home stretch, and a has got a chance, and – you know, I, I'm willing to bet they're going to be paying attention to what happens tonight in Tuscaloosa because that's a big game, and uh, AM doesn't have to play Georgia for the rest of the regular season. Kind of a stark contrast from 2016 where AM ranked number four in the nation, comes over here to Mississippi State. Trevor Knight gets injured. They lose, and the season just kind of tanks downhill from there. They come here to Starkville, get their first win since 2012, and now it kind of seems like doors are open for them instead of doors shutting, uh, moving on in the season. Probably a good thing, though, that they had this bye week leading into Arkansas, which 
not only is Arkansas a tough test every year, no matter what they're doing, but it's even more compounded with what they were able to do today against Ole Miss these last couple of games. They're a, they're a tough team. We got people looking at us here that uh, want us to get out of this room so they can clean it up, so we need to do that. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching. We'll be back uh, this week uh, to uh, wrap everything up with uh, Jimbo Fisher. Be sure to check the eagle.com for all the recaps and everything for today, and we will talk to you again soon.